Thanks for staying with us. The clinical trial of an experimental tuberculosis vaccine has kicked off and the experimental vaccine called M72 for short will be administered at 60 sites in some countries across the continent. And let's get more details now on how significant this moment is. We speak to Professor Lee Fairley, Director of Maternal and Child Health at the Vets Reproductive Health and HIV Institute. Prof, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Let's just start with how important this moment is. So the, this clinical trial is extremely important um, because what we're hoping is, well, firstly, I mean, we need to find better ways of, of preventing TB. Um, so we know that we, we do, there is TB prevention medication available, but that doesn't always reach everybody that it should. Um, it doesn't always have the impact that it should. And so actually what we really need is, is a vaccine that's going to make a huge difference in, in terms of TB prevention. Mm. So this particular study is um, replicating, well, or trying to replicate a, a study that um, was conducted a few years ago, which really showed that in people who had previously been infected with TB, but didn't go on to get TB disease, so had what we call latent TB, if they received the M72 vaccine, there was around a 50% reduction in the number of pulmonary or chest or lung um, TB cases, um, which really was a, a very significant result. Um, the same vaccine was also then tested in the last few years in people living with HIV um, and also showed no safety concerns um, and, and showed that there was a good um, immune response to the vaccine. So really in this study, what we're trying to do is a phase three study. So a large number of people who are enrolled, 20,000 across a number of different um, countries. So South Africa will probably enroll about 50 to 60% of the people. Then um, Zambia, um, Mozambique, Malawi, Kenya, and then um, Indonesia and, and Thailand. Um, and across the study, 20,000 people will be enrolled. The majority of people will be people who have evidence of having had previous TB infection, so that latent TB that we spoke about, mm -hmm. but then didn't, didn't go on to develop TB. So that's uh, the 18,000 people who've previously, or who've got latent TB or had previous TB infection enrolled in the study, and then a smaller number of people with living with HIV, um, and then people who don't have evidence of previous TB infection. And the, the first jabs um, also being administered, how's that going so far? How has been the response? Yep. So the first jabs have been administered. So far, so good. I think we, you know, obviously we can't start to say anything about the, um, you know, s safety, which really evaluates around um, any local reactions to the vaccine and then any um, symptoms that someone might get from the vaccine. Um, certainly the previous studies showed that the vaccine was really quite safe. Um, so, yeah, so, so far, so good. Um, and, you know, we, um, there are not many people who've been vaccinated yet but the study is progressing very well. And how long is it likely to last? So this is, it's a long game. <laughs> These studies take um, a number of years. Um, we're recruiting participants for about 24 months um, and then follow up for about four years um, until a certain number of TB cases um, occur within in the cohort. So we're looking at about 110 um, TB cases cases and then once that has happened we can then start to go on looking at whether there was a difference between the vaccine group and what we call the placebo group um the data then obviously as I say gets analyzed um and then the um the vaccine gets filed for for registration um after which hopefully it may you know um then as if it's um, shown to, to replicate these results and if we see a good result, then um, should be registered and, and then available in the public space. So someone who's watching and says, so do I need to go to my local clinic and ask to be part or, or, or how will it work? Will I be identified maybe if I'm going to, to the clinic or at, how will it all work? 
So any participation in a study is always entirely voluntary. Um, so we we use a number of different ways that that we inc you know encourage people to be part of a study. Um, some of it is is word of mouth and and you know people are enthusiastic. They hear that their friends or family have been part of of a study and and they're keen to join. Um, sometimes we you know sort of have. Um, we're a clinical research site, so we have participants that have, you know, perhaps not been able to be on a different study, but are enthusiastic um, on in being in this study. Um, we can also recruit through various clinics. Um, so if we're recruiting people living with HIV specifically, that that we generally do tend to recruit um, within a in a clinic environment. Um, and then we use social media and and various other mechanisms um, to to actually recruit people. Um, in this study, because we do need to focus on the highest risk people with, and, and people who would get the highest benefit, which is people who've had, have got evidence of, of previous TB infection, um, we will need to think about, you know, specifically um, looking at, at high burden areas where we, we know that people are unfortunately at higher risk of, of developing TB mm. disease. And how much of a challenge would you say the funding was, especially with the work that is to be undertaken? So the um, Gates MRI and then Wellcome Trust have really jumped on board. they committed to this as as really a major kind of public health um venture and so so fortunately the the funding um has you know has been secured for the study and is secured um for for the next few years so that the study can be conducted well um across well you know mainly in south africa and um sub-saharan africa but um also in other places such as vietnam and indonesia as you say, profits, the long game. Let's see how it all unfolds. And uh, hopefully, you know, it makes this impact. And listening to what you're saying, there's a lot of focus that needs to be on the study and to see um, how things develop there. But thank you so much for your time this evening. That was uh, Professor Lee Feddy, uh, Director of Maternal and Child Health at the Verts Reproductive Health and HIV Institute.